In the world of My Hero Academia, nearly 80% of the population have inborn superpowers called quirks. These superpowers run the gamut from the standard to the completely bizarre, but not all quirks are created equal. Here are the worst and best quirks ranked. Minoru Mineta has the ability to throw giant sticky balls that grow on his head in place of hair. The balls stick to whatever surface they land on, but Mineta himself bounces right off. Already, we're off to a bad start. The idea of throwing sticky balls that grow out of your scalp is incredibly disturbing. The worst part, however, is the side effect that comes with throwing too many of his hairballs. If Mineta overuses his quirk, his head starts to bleed, which implies that his balls are closer in composition to skin than hair. All in all, it's a deeply disturbing quirk that's gross enough to offset even the faintest possibility of usefulness. It might seem strange for a quirk with so few downsides to land on the tail end of this list. But by the same token, Mashiru Ojiro's quirk has no upsides either. It's just a tail. In fairness, it's a tail that he has enough control over to whip around and smack villains with. However, compared to the most powerful and most bizarre quirks in My Hero Academia, his superpower is just boring. In fact, the plainness of his quirk is about as much character as Ojiro gets. When your entire personality is rooted in how boring your superpower is, that's when you know you've lost the genetic lottery. Still, there's no need to live life with your tail between your legs. Mirio Togata is one of the most impressive heroes in My Hero Academia. Trained by the pro-hero Night Eye and considered one of the big three at UA, Mirio seems to be the platonic ideal of an All Might successor. Most impressively, he does it all with a quirk that's much worse than he makes it look. With his permeation quirk, Mirio can be completely intangible. When he becomes tangible inside of a solid object, he's rocketed out of that object at high speed. You might be wondering why such a useful power comes so low on the list. The reason is simple. Mirio goes blind, deaf, and loses the ability to breathe when he phases. Basically, the only thing he feels is a vague sense of falling, which, combined with his tendency to phase into the ground, sounds like pure torture. Spinner's quirk lets him stick to walls, but that's because he's basically a lizard man. In a world where kids have naval lasers and sugar-powered super strength, the ability to look like a big lizard just seems sad. Some of the other characters have inherited animal features, but they also get cool powers of their own. Tokoyami has a bird head, but he also has a shadow creature that can fly him around. Koda has a rock head, but he can talk to animals. Even another mutant, Suyu, has a long tongue, acid vomit, and can camouflage herself with her surroundings. Compared to any of those, Spinner's ability to look like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle original character that you drew when you were a teenager just doesn't measure up. The world of MHA is full of high-tech gadgets and weird technology that heroes and villains can use if they weren't lucky enough to be blessed with an exceptionally useful quirk. Of course, someone has to design those interesting gadgets and weapons, which is where Mei Hatsume comes in. She attends UA to learn how to make support equipment, MHA's in-universe term for utility belts, costumes, and super weapons. It's no surprise that Hatsume's focus is on the support side of things since her quirk is pretty boring. Hatsume's zoom quirk lets her vision zoom in any object that she's looking at up to 5 kilometers away. It's not a bad quirk, but it's not really a good one either. No wonder Hatsume chose a career path that had almost nothing to do with it. Even in his old age, Gran Torino has proved himself to be a powerful combatant multiple times, and his jet quirk seems to be a major factor. It allows him to shoot air from the soles of his feet, giving him incredible speed and agility as he dashes around and delivers high-velocity punches. So why isn't he higher on the list? As it turns out, that speed has to come from somewhere. Gran Torino's quirk shoots air out of his feet, but it's the same air he uses to breathe. That's some incredible lung strength, but it means that there's a hard limit to how often and how much he can use his quirk. Still, you could say that his quirk is a breath of fresh air compared to the more outlandish ones out there. Shoto Aizawa, aka Eraserhead, can temporarily halt the activation of quirks as long as he keeps his eyes open after looking at a quirk user. As soon as he blinks, the effect ends. It doesn't affect mutant types like Spinner or Jiro, but it would stop Todoroki from controlling fire and ice. That's a pretty useful power in the world of My Hero Academia, which is packed to the brim with quirk users of all types. The ability to shut down a villain before they start doing their villainous acts is solid, but that's all it does. Ultimately, a quirk that depends so much on the presence of other quirk users to be effective makes this a middle-of-the-road power. Who among us can say that they've never stomped through sandcastles or miniature cities pretending to breathe nuclear fire while humming Blue Oyster Cult's second-best song? It's an enticing fantasy, and one that superhero Mount Lady can live every day. As you might expect from her punny name, Mount Lady can grow to giant size with her gigantification quirk. Unfortunately, it's only half as useful as it sounds. 
Mount Lady can grow to giant size, but she doesn't have the ability to grow and shrink. She only has the ability to grow to her giant size and back to regular human size. That seems like a recipe for disaster in metropolitan areas. And the lack of control means that gigantification is unlikely to land in the top spot of any most desired superpower list. Still, we'd be lying if we said that we didn't want to act out our own Tom Hanks in big fantasies. I wish I were big. We already have at least one super speedster in the My Hero Academia cast in the form of UA student Tenya Ida, but his engine quirk is still revving up in the anime. Instead, his brother, the pro hero Ingenium, has a much more powerful quirk at the moment. Instead of powerful engines on his legs like his younger brother, Ingenium has engines on his arms, letting him blast through the air like the world's fastest Naruto runner. In other words, he's both fast and furious. I live my life a quarter mile at a time. In the world of My Hero Academia, quirks usually come with a drawback or weakness, but that's not something Shoto Todoroki has to worry about. His quirk allows him to control fire and ice to an almost unlimited extent. On the right side of his body, he generates ice, while on the left, he can control fire. Granted, overusing one half of his body reflects that increase or decrease in temperature onto his own body, but just switching to the other half regulates his own temperature back to normal. Even in the world of My Hero Academia, Todoroki's quirk is absolutely powerful. In fact, its existence is explicitly due to active effort on his father's part to engineer an ultra-powerful air. However, putting Todoroki's tragic superhero origin aside, we can't find any particular issue with this ultra-powerful quirk. We're not going to play hot and cold here. This quirk is worth getting fired up about. Copycat characters have existed in superhero fiction almost as long as superpowers. From Taskmaster to Amazo, there's just something innately satisfying about seeing someone copy and combine familiar superpowers in new ways. Since My Hero Academia never shies away from a good superhero fictional trope, there is, of course, a copycat quirk wielder. The catch is that he's pretty undeniably heroic, even if he's kind of a jerk about it. Nato Manoa is a UA student with the ability to copy the quirk of anyone he touches. He can copy up to four abilities and use any one ability at a time for up to 10 minutes before he needs to physically touch them again. While that's not much use out in the real world, Manoma's copycat quirk is extraordinarily useful in the quirk-filled world of My Hero Academia. Being able to copy up to four powers at a time with a touch makes Manoma an incredibly dangerous opponent in a melee. What's more, knowledge of his quirk only makes him more dangerous since he can throw in bluffs to confuse clever enemies. The only real drawback to his quirk, besides the time limit, is that he can only make use of quirks that don't depend on external power sources. Fat Gum's fat absorption quirk wouldn't be possible for the skinny Manoma, and so on. A balanced diet is important to living your best life. For Tamaki Yamajiki, a balanced diet is particularly important to living his best superhero life. As the hero Sun Eater, Tamaki has the ability to manifest characteristics of whatever he eats as part of his own body. That means that if he eats clams or octopus, he can turn parts of his body into tentacles or clamshells. If he eats a bird, he can grow wings and fly. The size, number of manifestations, and exact features of the food he wants to use are entirely up to him. While it's an incredibly weird-looking quirk to have, it's undeniably a useful one. Hit up an all-you-can-eat fish buffet, and you could probably swim faster than Michael Phelps. Eat a few plates of chicken, and you can, uh, kind of halfway fly and hop around? You get the idea. Tamaki's power isn't even limited to conventional food, either. At one point, he eats some crystals created by another quirk user in order to make his own flesh into crystals. Best Genist's Fiber Master quirk allows him to control individual threads of fiber. That makes him nearly unstoppable against anyone wearing clothes, which is nearly everyone. He's a never nude. Is that exactly what it sounds like? Tobias suffered a rare psychological affliction of never being able to be completely naked. Best Genist has some minor drawbacks to his quirk. For one, the type of thread influences how easily he's able to control it. Still, it's one of the weirdest and most useful quirks in all of the My Hero Academia universe. Unless he goes up against a supervillainous nudist colony, Best Genist is one of the best. Twice can make an exact duplicate of anything as long as he knows the exact measurements. He's limited to two doubles at a time, and those doubles are slightly weaker than the real things, but they still have their own abilities and will. That means that, functionally, he doesn't have any limits when it comes to cloning himself. He can clone himself, and then that clone can clone himself, and then that clone's clone can clone himself, and so on infinitely. Beyond its use in making personal armies, it's the perfect cooperative quirk with other villains, since Twice can make a clone of himself and a clone of another villain, which can likewise repeat seemingly infinitely. In fact, the only real reason that My Hero Academia isn't entirely about the world's heroes uniting against this seemingly ultra-powerful villain 
is that Twice spends most of his time completely insane as a result of cloning himself too much. He doesn't know if he was the original clone and spent years worrying that he was just his own doppelganger. As horrifying as that might be, there's a pretty easy solution. Just write numbers on all your clones' heads, and it doesn't seem like identity confusion will ever be a problem. They look exactly like us, so in order to avoid confusion, I'm gonna mark us each with a red X right now. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite anime are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.